Wow. I don't know about the first half. I hope the second half can hold up. It was an amazing performance by everybody. This is the Agora. It comes from Greek. It was the meeting place. It was the place of the center of the community. The community often traded vegetables and fruits and ideas and thoughts. Greece gives us a lot of things, democracy, thoughts, uh, wonderful things. But one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is that just down the way, and up the hill a little bit, and over there, it's about a five-minute walk, is the Theatron. You've all been to the Theatron, I'm sure. It's, the, it's one of our cultural experiences here in Greece. It's fantastic. But I need to, to tell you it's a little different than the Agora. For example, I and my fellow thespians, you do know that Thespis won our first contest in Greece? Yes, our thespians today continue that tradition. So our thespians would be here at the lower floor in a large kind of three-quarters um, coliseum. They didn't have electricity. They had no lights. It was an outdoor, open event. It was fantastic because the whole city, when the, when the thespians were going to begin, were alive. It was a way to culturally exchange, to sit there, to have a great time. The backdrop might be a one- or a two-story building on which we'd paint murals to, to indicate the tragedy and the wars and the things that we spoke about. We might have some trap doors where people could jump down or reappear. So in your mind tonight, I want you to be seated somewhere, and some coliseums even had 14,000 people. 14,000 people, and imagine no electric amplification. They just talked. Now, I'm going to differ extensively from those uh, thespians because they wore full masks, and they had a dressing department back here, and they had some uh, musicians in the front, and they would come out with their masks, and the mask would be very exaggerated. The simple reason is that the people that are way up there had to see the emotion or the fright or the gruesome face that they might have been wearing. So, you're on the bottom floor, and I'm glad you're here, but that's not how it really would be. In addition, I've chosen to be the sole actor for several people tonight. So I'm going to have to change my appearance, and I think you'll catch on to my appearance change as it goes. So, uh, Damen und Herren, uh, liebe Schule, uh, my name is Billy, and I hope you enjoy the show tonight. Okay. I have to set my stage. I think, you know, sometimes they would have these calls that would tell us when it was time to go and begin the show. So I know it's coming soon. Oh, yes, my cue. Thank you. <clears throat> this would ordinarily be quite guarded. You wouldn't see my magic tricks. There's somebody that's very envious of these colors, I can tell already. <clears throat> now, the situation is that we're going to have a teacher talking with his students. Sometimes it's his students, sometimes it's her students. I hope to change the pronouns often enough to realize that it's not a male teacher or a female teacher. It is a teacher and the intimacy that they have with their classroom. I am now the teacher. When I am not the teacher and I'm your narrator, I will have the glasses off. I may get confused, so help me a little bit in that case. Forgive me. Okay, so the teacher is sitting with his students and he has this feeling one day and he says, class. I've got this great idea. I have been thinking, and I know you've been prepared for this most of your career, and you've probably heard this before, but let, let's move the chair. I'll, I'll surprise you. So uh, Tina and uh, Juan, please just start moving the chairs aside. Let's, let's make a big circle here. Gosh, this isn't working out. There's not enough room. Okay, sorry, sorry, teacher's wrong. Okay, guess what? Let's go to our favorite meditation spot down here in the grass near the river because I, oh yeah, you guys really like this, don't you? Okay, all right, I'll meet you there in just a minute. Let's go. So they head back. They, I should be up here, I'm sorry about that. Uh, they head onto the river and um, so the teacher busts in and says, gosh, children, I think you know, you're about to graduate. You, you guys have rubbed shoulders with me. We've really had a great time. I'm going to ask you this question. What is it that you want to be when you grow up? Well, ordinarily, these children are so 
anxious, competitive to share what they are, what they've been thinking, the silence was deafening. They didn't know what happened. It's like when a teacher has a bad moment in teaching. It's like, oh my God, nothing's happening. <laughs> Nothing happened. But slowly, just very, very slowly, a person began to raise their hand. Yes, Gregor, Gregor. Teacher, I wish that, I, that you had called on me, but you, you have given us such a wonderful thing. I, I, I'm, I'm just a little afraid to tell you the answer to that question. And, and, I, and if you'll just forgive me, I'll, I'll do my best to help you. But remember the time that you caught me daydreaming in school? Remember when you walked up to me and you put your hand on my shoulder and said, are you daydreaming? But you didn't scold me. You said, share with me what that was that you were thinking about. So Gregor says, you know, I remember that time you told us about Carl Sagan and how he wrote a book about the blue planet. And that was because the Voyager was sent out into 60 billion miles from the Earth. And it was instructed to turn its camera around and take a picture of Earth. And as it took a picture, when you first look at this, there was nothing there. And teacher, it was so amazing because slowly you pointed out there was a little blue dot. If you know what a pixel is about, a pixel is a really small piece of a digital photograph. And this pixel size was one-tenth of a pixel. You could just barely miss that. And Gregor says, I suddenly realized that that this, this is our space suit. We've been talking about going to space and you wear a space suit and, you, you, and the space suit has to have a cooling system and it has to have a, a way for you to be shielded from, you have to have oxygen, you have to have all these things. I suddenly realized that our planet is our space suit. We, we have food, we have water, we have cooling, we have shielding in our electromagnetic fields. This is an amazing planet, and I, I suddenly realized that was just so stunning to me that I have been working now in that field for many years. Hmm. So the teacher looks at him and says, gee, Gregor, that's, that's fascinating, but you're, you're speaking as if you've already done this. Slowly, another student named Samira raises her hand. Teacher, please, if you'll just forgive me, I want to share you how my life has been changed by education, the things that I've done. I was always curious in your class. I, I look forward to it, and, and, you were, and all of our teachers were challenging us into so many things. I went to school. I always liked kind of uh, emergencies, but I could keep a clear head. And suddenly I realized that I wanted to be in emergency. I, I worked in an ER in a hospital. It wasn't enough. I moved over to triage in, in, in hospitals. Teacher, I work in a refugee camp in North Africa. Each day I work with the very essence of life and death. And I must prioritize who lives and who dies. The teacher is having problems. This is not the lesson plan the teacher had hoped for. He's thinking about this. She's, she's worried. She's overwhelmed with what's happening. But then another student raises their hand. Juan, what are you saying? Miss teacher, you realize that you asked us to always think about an opinion that we might have someone else might think differently than us. And to embrace the opposite viewpoint, to take these two viewpoints and look at their commonality as opposed to their difference. I work in international labor relations. I'm all over the world. I'm helping to solve international disputes by bringing people together of different cultures, different languages, and setting them down and say, we share the same breath. We drink the same water.
We eat similar foods. Are we not more common than we are different? I love my job. The teacher is beginning to figure out that this is not a normal day. Sorry for the changes, but this is funny. <laughs> Finally, the last person that he could ever think, a very timid young lady, says, okay, young, young, go ahead, speak. Teacher, I want to tell you that this schooling system has helped me to be a mother. I've always wanted to be a mother. I couldn't wait to have children of my own, to grow them up, to hold them, to care for them, to be a role model, to be honest, to admit when I make a mistake, to cry when I need to cry in front of them, to laugh, to embrace them. But somehow, I've realized that we have something different happening on our planet. I'm a mother and I wish to take care of my children, but as Gregor and others have pointed out, we live on a very small pixel of blue. All of history has taken place. Everything that's ever lived or died is on this planet. Everything that means anything to any of us is here on this very small blue pale dot. I think we have a problem. Our mother, my mother, our earth mother, it has a fever. It has, it has pl plugged arteries. It has issues. We have parasites. Parasites can be good and bad, but in parasitic biology, a parasite ends up killing the host that gave it life. Are we not a little parasitic at this point, overlooking perhaps what was going on? It got quiet again. Ah, what? Silly alarm clock? God, what a dream. That was just a dream, wasn't it? The teacher runs to school. Class, class, oh my God, you're the most wonderful people in the world. I, I just had this amazing dream. I, I can't imagine it. I love you. I, you you're, you're the hope of our future. Thank God for you. Oh, I love you. Thank you, thank you for letting me be your teacher tonight. <laughs>